Praise Him. The Lord's good. Yes, He is. And I've heard that His mercy endures forever. The Bible says that. And we are grateful for it. Praise Him. Listen, listen friends, you, you're here on a Tuesday night. Here on a Tuesday night, right? So uh, you made the effort to be here. Can I encourage you to be an edge of your seat Christian rather than a lean back in your seat Christian? Would you understand the difference between those two things? Rather than just plopping in and saying, okay, do your thing, preacher. <laughs> We've, uh, if you've been here the last couple of evenings and then Sunday morning, you, you know we're all about getting everybody to do their part. Is that right? But having said that, so good to see you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming back. If you came back and uh, if it's your first time here, then uh, thank you for being here. And this is kind of part four of a four-part message. And so uh, you'll get something good tonight. You'll get something good tonight. Don't, don't you appreciate the, the ministry we've had tonight already from the worship team? I love, love those songs. And uh, thank you guys for that, for helping us with that. The presence of God is wonderful. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, if I could just for a moment maybe call your attention to some things that are uh, some of the books that we have out there. They, um, I sometimes say this because I come up all the time with all this stack of books, you know, and it, and it could seem like, well, you're trying to pawn your goods, you know. But it's not, I, I don't see it that way. I'm not a businessman in, a, in this setting, you know, meaning that, um, yeah, we sell them, but for a real fair price, and truthfully, I give away many times more than what I sell. Yeah. And so what we, what we make off of that, to be truthful about it, helps you, because you didn't come here for me to lie to you, right? Nope. So, <laughs> what I make, what we uh, get off of them goes to print uh, oftentimes the next book or to order more of them. Right. So um, we have that. Of course, there's nothing wrong with, with selling st stuff within reason anyhow. But this one is called Simple Faith. This is a result of a very supernatural revelation that I have. Matter of fact, I, won't, I can't count, I, I don't know any time that God's visited me uh, in order to give me a sermon the way he did for this. I mean, I, I, heard, I heard a voice within me so loud giving me the first point to this, and then as I got quiet, he gave me the other three points. And it revolutionized my thinking about the subject of faith and uh, I, I, will, I will be preaching this sermon that's in this book, this teaching on faith. I will be preaching this and living this as long as I'm here on earth. So that's out there. And, uh, you know, another experience I had when I was, uh, when I was a young man, younger man, uh, God began to teach me some things about the subject of humility, but I'd never heard any teaching on it. But I mean just his spirit would deal with me when I'd say certain things. He'd deal with me. I don't like that. Yeah, right. I don't like how you're saying that. Yeah. It's drawing attention to, yeah. to you. Uh -huh. and, he, um, and then I went to Bible school. and Thank God I heard some, some wonderful teaching on the subject. But while I was there at Bible school, God really spoke to me about the subject of humility. And, and he said, not by some audible voice, but on the inside of me, he said, son, there's things I want to use you to do but I can't unless you learn this. And for a number of years, I mean, there's no subject he emphasized to me more than humility. It's a huge, huge thing for the believer to learn because it's in some ways the key to all that God would want to do for you. And so uh, a number of years ago, I wrote a book on the subject by the Lord's direction. It's called The Dogs Get the Crumbs, Amen. A Study in Humility. And you'd have to know about the Syrophoenician woman in Matthew 15 to understand that title. Right. The, but how many know Jesus called her a dog? Yeah. And she said, truth, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> but the dogs get the crumbs, don't they? Yeah. And the only person in Scripture that Jesus ever told no to when they came for healing left healed. Yeah. Powerful stuff, isn't it? Yeah. it is. <laughs> Do you have this book? This 
Can I bless you with it? Not because I think you need it. Oh. Worse than, well, you do need it. We all need it. Yeah. Do you have simple faith? I do. Yeah, good. That's good. <laughs> But, uh, well, the Bible says before honor comes humility. So I talked about humility. Now I'm going to talk about honor. We got them right in the right order. This book is a reprint, not just a reprint, but um, God had taught me so much in the 10 years since I originally uh, wrote this book that there's a whole lot of additional material in it. It's called What Happened to Honor. Uh, this is a, a life. It's been a life changer for me, that subject. And then I've got two. Well, I have three books on the subject of prosperity. Not as many as your. Well, how many do you have? Two, two or three? We're not. We're not racing. <laughs> but I appreciate his assignment, pastor's assignment in that area, and how he's faithful to that. And that means a lot because not a lot of people uh, will preach it in a balanced fashion, you know, or uh, some are just scared to. Um, but one of the things God dealt with me about on, along the lines of prosperity is he is. Uh, he dealt with me, there's a book on healing called Christ the Healer that just goes down the line and just proves yeah. healing. And he said, I want, a, I want a book that proves prosperity. Amen. Not that he needs it proved, but the word, the word proves it. And so um, he gave me 25 reasons why we're sure that it's God's will for all to be rich. Amen. Uh, I, sometimes I say, I, I, I got to be careful, I say that, and some people don't listen to anything else I said in the meeting because they're like, that's a lie. <laughs> well, you, you don't know the 25 reasons, that's why you would say that. <laughs> if you knew the 25 reasons, you wouldn't say it's a lie. But I prove it. Well, can I say it this way? The Word proves it. The Word proves it. And so uh, 10 of those reasons are in this book, 10 of the 25. It's called Rich Biblical Proof for Prosperity. You must say, what about the other 15 reasons? They're in richer. <laughs> More biblical proof for prosperity. Amen. So all of those plus things I didn't have time to mention are out there. We just completed our 18th book. Not that we're counting, wow. but we are. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, it's not here. The latest one we have here would be number 17 called Lead. But uh, book number 18 uh, there's only two people on the planet that have a copy of it. And they're sitting up here. But uh, within the next month or two, and by the time we have the crusade meeting here, you should have those. It's called Healed, 30 Days of Health, Strength, and Life. And I'm telling you, it is good stuff. I fe I've been feeding on it. And uh, I I'm so honored to be used of God at all. I'll tell you what's going to help us tonight, <laughs> if I can see what we're doing. <laughs> I mean, I can see, generally speaking, but you know, you, uh, you age a little bit, and they say it's just a natural thing, and, and you start holding stuff further, further away, and then you run out of arm. Right, right, right. <laughs> you can't hold it out any further, so you, you, you have your cheaters. Uh, go with us tonight to the scripture we've been looking at in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Hallelujah. We're all believing together. That everything God once said, everything God once done will be said, will be done. No more, no less. You might say, well, we'll take more. No, you don't want more than what God wants done. You don't want to go past what his anointing's there for. But let's just say we're going to get it all tonight. I really, I really don't have much of a sense of, of what that's going to look like other than where we're going to start. I do have something that the Lord, you know, some things the Lord put on my heart for the services in general. I know we hadn't got to them yet. We'll see if we do, but that's why we're believing together. That's right. Yeah. And if I could say this, friends, could you smile tonight? Because if you, had to, if you were using your faith to preach and you had to look at what I'm looking at, <laughs> it might be more than your faith could handle. So it would bless everybody, and especially me, if you just looked like you're enjoying this, you know. <laughs> I've a, I, have a, I have a dear friend who I won't name, but um, back in the day, one of the things I used to do for Brother Hagen when I worked for him was I would produce their music projects in the recording studio, and a lot of times we'd go to Nashville and do, then do a lot of stuff there in Tulsa, and uh, 
we were recording the singers one day, and I was, I was in this, I had one of the singers singing their lead in the studio, and the engineer looked, to me, uh, looked at me and said, he looks like he would rather be in any prison in America <laughs> than here right now. And uh, <laughs> I don't think he enjoyed it, but to, 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 if, to help you understand it, I did have, I did have a, a, a record. I made almost all of the singers at least all the gals cry at some point <laughs> in the studio. If you've ever been in the recording studio, you can understand that sometimes you think you're doing great and then you hear it back and you just want to cry. <laughs> and it was my job to say, no, that's not it. <laughs> we we got to do better. And so uh, anyhow, so that's probably why. But it shouldn't be that when you come to hear me preach, you look like you're about to lose it. So we might, get, we might get there, but we're not there yet. And I know some of you are still thinking of the five points to my sermon yesterday. And he's like, he don't care if I'm happy. He don't care. You're right. You're right. But, but still, still, let's, let's get all God has for us tonight. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what we're doing tonight, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to give you five more reasons why I don't care. All right. No guarantees. This amazing passage, and I've been preaching on this for really the better part of, well, most of last year, some of this year now, and uh, just don't even feel like I've scratched the surface of it. You know, in the fourth verse, Paul's writing, and he said, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Christ Jesus. We don't have time to talk about it now, but if you knew how big that statement is and all that that includes you'll know that it's not just like a passing, yeah. hey, how you doing kind of statement. There's really a lot in there. Right. And he, and he kind of gives some clarification. He said, uh, in other words, this grace is so big that God's given you that in everything you are enriched. There's no sense in which your life is like the life of somebody without Christ. Right. There, there should be no sense. Your life should be so different from top to bottom. Everything about your life. So, you know, the world goes this way and tells everybody you got to go this way, and just, you know, they promote their doctrine, and they promote their teaching, and everybody gets on board, and if you don't agree, you're a bad, 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 bad person. Come on now. But I'm telling you, God's life and God's kingdom is, is uh, operated by higher laws, and God has a better life for you. He's got a higher life for you, and you want to hear his truth. It might initially step on your toes. It might initially make you feel uncomfortable. But what do we know about your comfort? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> he doesn't care if you're comfortable. But, you know, the reason he doesn't care about whether you're comfortable is so he can be the comforter in your life and bring you that which you need. So God's got, listen, I was on my way over here, and God said this one thing that I don't want to forget to say. He said, tell them how good I am and how many good things I I have for him. Well, see, that's included in there when it talks about the grace of God. What God has for you is so, so good. But you get God's good things going God's way. Yeah, not your way, not the world's way. You got to turn to the world and say, sayonara, see you later, bye-bye. And then you go God's way and you, you let, and, and that's where we were talking about humility a little bit ago. Uh, you have to have the kind of heart that says, okay, I thought it was this way, but I guess I was wrong. How many, how many uh, Christians here, you had a, you're coming to Christ, maybe you weren't raised like me. I wasn't raised as a Christian. I was raised Jewish. You know, that's about as far as you could get from being a church boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so uh, when I came to Christ, it was so radical but then, uh, but then you, could, you could come up in a church and even learn some things. Not this church, you'd learn it right here, but you could come up in some churches where they just, they teach things meaning to teach the word, but they do, really, it's just a lot of traditional sayings there. And uh, how many had the Christian experience where you got saved and you started coming to this church and started hearing the world and you're like, well, I thought I knew about that, but I get, guess, I, guess I didn't know about that like I thought I did, right? Well, see, that, that takes, that takes uh, a right heart. That takes a humble heart. Pride will say, I don't care what they say. I, li this is what, I, I believe it the way I believe it. Which, just so you know, you are welcome to do. 
you won't get God's results. But you are welcome to have it your way. This is America, after all. We do have Burger King, whose slogan used to be, is it still there? I haven't eaten there in, in so long. Is their slogan still, have it your way? Is it? Thank. Okay, good. See, we, now we know. See, back in the day, some of y'all can sing it with me. Have it your way at Burger King, right? Have it. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders. Don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us have it your way. You must say, what verse is that? <laughs> Third Kings. <laughs> But God's not a have it your way God. If you have it his way, you will love his way. Make his way your way. Anyhow, so he said, in everything, in, in everything you are enriched or enhanced or changed by him. In all utterance, I'm going to know we talk differently as, as new creatures in Christ. And in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you come behind in no gift. And we studied the other night that that word gift, the Greek word charisma, is, is talking about the supernatural manifestation of God. And it's possible for churches and individuals and whole groups of Christians to be behind we, we've been equipped to live beyond yeah. rather than behind. That's right. Come on. You need to go from behind to beyond, uh -huh. beyond what's normal, beyond what, what's, come on now. Yes, sir. And so it's possible to be behind, but especially behind this area of the manifestation of God. God is a God who manifests. The Bible calls him in Ephesians chapter 3, the Father of glory. Did you know that? The Father of Glory. Am I making it up or am I in here? Who knows the Bible in this room besides Brother Rex? Come on now. Does the Bible not talk about he's the Father of Glory? Well, what is, what is the glory of God? It's the manifest presence of God. So could we say he's the Father of manifestation or the Father who loves to manifest? What does it mean for God to manifest? It means that what's in the spirit realm becomes accessible and tangible in the natural realm. Amen. And see, that's what we, we want to get to, to where every time God desires to manifest himself, anytime he desires to bring his good things from his world into your world, that we don't miss it, that we don't come behind. We don't want to have services where, uh, where, where Jesus is saying to the angels, well, 20% of what we wanted to happen in that service happened. You might say that would never happen here. Sure, it has happened here. It has happened. There's been times where almost none of what God wanted to happen happened. You might say, well, our preacher should get it right. Well, the preacher's not the only one that has, that has something to do with that. Preacher can be preaching the right message, can have heard from God what to do. But uh, you know, how many know a service is more than two songs in a sermon? Should be. Should be. Doesn't mean every service you're going to have, uh, you know, running and dancing and shouting and all, and all that. But uh, there are elements that, are, that we regularly, uh, you know, because there's certain manifestations of God that we can initiate. And I start, left you last night by talking about how when we're praising God, yeah, how many know you can initiate praise? Yep. Yes. Can't you? Amen. Can you? Can you decide to praise God yes. and just praise God? Amen. Sure. And, and how many, uh, ha have you ever experienced God say, well, that was your idea, not mine. I'm not in it. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> Talked about that, didn't we? You ever have God say, well, I'm not feeling it today because it wasn't? No. How many know he is wonderfully faithful Amen. what happens every time you start singing uh the that that second song when it talks about th thank you the, the thank you section the three the three thank yous was there three four thank yous i don't know whatever it was and then the holy the holy section 
Well, they, they, as soon as they start singing that, as soon as she said the word thank you, the level. Now, I've, I've endeavored to develop my spirit to be sensitive to these things. It's part of, part of my job, part of my office, if I could say it that way. But the level of presence, the second they, they said, started saying thank you, came up. Some of you are nodding your head, yeah, you sensed it. You sensed it. Well, that wasn't some special manifestation, meaning you can, you, ha- you, can somewhat, you can have some variety of that all the time. If we draw near to him, he, right, he'll draw near to us. And you might say, well, well, we're just initiating that. Well, no, I mean, he gave us the praise to begin with. He, he initiated it all, like when we bring him his word. It's his word. <laughs> It was his idea to begin with. Amen. See what we're saying? Yes, sir. And so we want, because, so we don't come behind in what he wants to do. Uh, we want to be positioned. And not just positioned, we want to be in the kind of condition to be able to work with him, cooperate with him, respond to him, participate with what he's doing. We want God to be able to manifest, and every time he desires to manifest, we want to be in step with him so that all that he wants to do can be done. Everybody that he would want to heal in a service would be able to, as far as as the atmosphere and as far as the movement of God, it would be uh, easy for them to receive, right? Anybody that comes in that's not a believer or hasn't given their life to God or hasn't made a, a real decision to consecrate to him, you know what I mean, dedicate to him. We want, we want there to be that presence in such a strong, tangible way that it's easily, help me out, easily what? Recognize. And I gave you these two keys to the movement of God, recognition and response. You can't preach it enough. You just can't say it enough. You can't teach it enough because there's always a percentage of people that are coming in that don't know this and uh, either don't know it or aren't doing it. And the only thing we know how to do, I mean, we're we're not going to, you always read these stories. I wonder if there's like a little bit of truth of, you know, I always used to be a member of this church, but they were so legalistic and they would whip us. Like, really? (laughs) How'd they get away with that for so long? I don't know. Maybe there are churches like that. I, I'm pretty sure at this church, no one's going to like physically put you in bondage. You see what I'm saying? Right. Uh, we're not going to. They're not going to handcuff you. They're not going to whip you. He has taken a couple thumbs off of different uh, people before. <laughs> they were texting in church. But no, in other words, nobody's going to force you. You need to be the, the policeman of your own life, right? And you, you need to have the kind of uh, discipline to realize and understanding to realize that whether or not the full purpose of God is accomplished in the service is in part dependent on me doing my part. It's not a works thing that if we'll, do, if we'll do something hard enough, then we'll get God to move. No, it's just cooperating with what he wants to do. Cooperating with what he wants to do. I said this last several services. We'll just say it again so, so we don't, uh, you know, we're wrapping up everything tonight. The manifestation of God requires the cooperation. Manifestation requires cooperation. That's what we said. Didn't we say that? Participation, we didn't agree on how I said it initially. If, if you want God to be able to, if you want God to manifest, don't you want, and think about what it's like. Oh, it's a beautiful sound. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a very easily distracted individual, but I'm also, I, I, I say by faith I'm focused. Unless you're riding with a Harley down the street. But anyhow, any idea what I was preaching on, even what subject? To do? Where am I? What night is it? Here's what I was going to say <laughs> before the motorcycle went by. Um, what I was, was going to say, and what I will say, imagine a church where God so regularly was able to manifest 
that if you knew somebody who was unsaved but hungry for God, you could almost, you could guarantee that they're going to so experience God when they come to church that they're either going to get saved or they're going to have to run out the back door. You know what I'm saying? Imagine a church where God's able to so powerfully manifest his presence. I love this word. I use it all the time. His presence is so tangible, meaning capable of touch. Not, you know, not physical, but you, you have physical senses, but you have a spirit. And your spirit is capable of real interaction with God, tangible interaction to where you know you experienced him. So imagine where God's presence and power is so tangible that if you meet somebody and people are being healed so regularly, not even coming up front and having someone lay hands on them. There's nothing wrong with that, and that's scriptural. But it, it, like, instead of having to have it come through the preacher, it's so permeating the atmosphere that you could just in your seat, it's like you get in the seat and God's already in the seat. And, so, and people are all the time testifying, I just came to the service and stuff started getting healed. And, and you have such a momentum of that that you know somebody and you hear that they're struggling with, a, with an ailment, illness, disease, whatever. Your first thought is, is not, <laughs> your first thought is, I wish Jesus would come down from heaven because I know he could heal. Your first thought is, come to my church with me. I'll give you my seat. See, you're used to being able to come in and get whatever seat you want. It's, it's sad, but Pastor Chris can tell you firsthand experience of having to, going to meetings, and he because he was telling me, and I can tell you firsthand experience. We were in some of the same meetings together where after the morning service, everybody would dismiss and the first thing everybody would do would not be go out to the restaurant it would be go get in line for the evening service in a church building that sat normally 4,500 people but they cram extra chairs along the wall to where there's 6,000 chairs in. now I was on staff so not only did I not have to do that I had a parking space reserved and didn't have to shuttle from the baseball fields but we, that was normal for us. That was normal. Why? Because of exactly what I'm talking about. There was something so tangible that people were saying, you've got to come, you've got to come get this. You've got to come get this. You're not going to get it online the same way. You've got to come get this. And they would, and they'd line up for hours and hours and hours and hours. So imagine if that was like that here, and all of a sudden now you have an issue every service, which is, Am I even going to get a seat? Yeah. And so the way to be assured a seat in a church service is to get involved in the ministry of helps to where you're now reserved. <laughs> you have a seat because you have a job. And see, smart people go ahead and serve now so that they can be reserved. How many reserved people do we have in here? We'll get you free from being too reserved. But, but it ought to be the case that God's able to, because I, I'm telling you, by his direction, I'm telling you, his goodness is such that he longs to manifest. He, wants, he has such good things for you. Each individual in here, he's got such good things for you. But you've got to encounter those things. Right? right. right? Yeah. And I promise you, I promise you, you get, you get to where people are just coming in and getting healed because God is so tangible in the place. <laughs> You'll have such confidence to say, come, just come to my church. You'll be okay. Just, just come. You'll be okay. Think about it. Think about it. Think about this. In the ministry of Jesus, he had that kind of momentum, didn't he? he had, I say momentum. He had those kind of results to where word got out. It's like everybody who's touching him is getting healed. 
and, it, and, and so the Bible says that they were bringing people to Jesus, sick people, crippled people, blind people, mentions all these. They were bringing them to Jesus, and it says they were, listen to me, they were casting them at his feet. Any fishermen? Raise your hand. Any fishermen, fisher, fisher ladies, fish friends? Anybody ever do any fishing? Have you ever cast your line? Is the object of casting uh, gentle? No. no. <laughs> now, if you do it like I did. Now, come on, now, I grew up, and uh, we, were, we were blessed to where we had a, uh, a little log cabin on a lake in the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania. And uh, my, my family owned it for a number of years. And uh, on this lake, my brother and I grew up, had, we had a rowboat, and we would row out, and we would go fishing almost every day. But, you know, regular fishing with worms and hooks, that got boring. So we decided we wanted to fish with bigger bait, so we thought, well, when we catch one of those sunfish about this big long, We'll just keep him on the line and use him as bait. <laughs> Terribly cruel. Animal cruelty 101. You know what I'm talking about? So we would, we would get, but why? Because see, now, that, now you have like something that weighs better part of a pound on your line. And so now you, you go back and you, and so the idea is how much of this reel can we let go? Casting. That's ca casting is a violent thing, especially if you're the fish on the line. They cast the sick people at Jesus' feet. I mean, can I have a volunteer from the front row just to, so we can show? <laughs> Don't volunteer him. What about you? <laughs> cast them. <laughs> Casting involves a violent throwing or heaving. Yeah. Crippled, crippled people, blind, blind people. Can you imagine? You can't see, and you feel... So your friends, listen, your friends brought you to church, to the meeting, and all of a sudden, your buddy says in your ear, just trust me, okay? <laughs> oh, no, 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 just trust me, okay? And you feel on your back, you feel hands on your back, and they shove you and throw you, and then, <laughs> then the crippled person, they say, uh, his friends come say, you trust us, right? He's like, why are you asking me that? And, and one grabs one hand, the front two, and the other grabs the leg, and they go, one, two. And they're like, what are you doing? Why would, why would they do that? That's, that's, that's terribly cruel. But every one of them's coming up healed. He's like, why are you casting me? This might hurt initially, but you'll be all right in just a few seconds. You might say you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. Read the Bible. They said they cast them at the maimed. They cast them at Jesus' feet. Boom. Could you imagine Jesus dealing with somebody, and as soon as he says, thank God you're healed, now go your way, sin, no, boom. There's another one. Boom. You know, our healing lines are not perfect, but, but they're an upgrade to what Jesus dealt with, you know. But why would, why, if you cared about your blind friend, why would you throw him? You have such confidence yeah. because, you, because you, God's healing has been taking place so much that it's, that it's just tangible in the room. That's what we want. That's what, and every person in here has a, a, is a contributor to that, can be a contributor. Please smile. What did I tell you? I didn't tell you to stop. Did I say stop? When did I say stop smiling? <laughs> Every person in here is a contributor to the flow and presence of God in the room. Yeah. You want to be actively using your faith for something? Actively use your faith for the glory and the presence of God to be so, it's so in manifestation that if a person comes in who's not right with God, Something comes on them. And they might fight it a little bit, and they might say, this is uncomfortable, but what do we know? We don't care. 
It might be initially uncomfortable, but they'll, they'll, get to where, to, they'll get to where they'll say, all right. They might just shout it out loud in the middle of the service. All right, I'll get saved. You want use your faith for that. Yeah. Believe, believe that, that in every chair and in every inch of this place. Listen, I'll tell you a little story. I went out, uh, you know, I got saved and didn't even go to a church for a couple years. I didn't know you were supposed to. Honest to God, when you, I wasn't raised in this. So I did finally get in a Bible study, and then the person who's leading the Bible study had the wisdom to finally say, you know, we all ought to just stop this and just go to church together. Because he had been part of a church before, so he knew. So he took us, and then, then I got involved. And uh, I'll tell you, there was, something, there was something there about that place. And it wasn't a place that believed in, in what we would call the spirit-filled life, meaning, uh, you know, God's presence was there, but in a, in a much less tangible manner. But when I went, uh, and of course, and then I traveled with a, a gospel music group for three years. We were in a different church every night. And so... Learned a lot. But anyhow, I went. God started dealing with me about going to Bible school. And he dealt with me about a place called Rhema Bible Training Center. Now it's Rhema Bible College. Rhema Bible Training. I don't know what it is. College, not center. But anyhow, in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, Brother Hagen's Bible School. Yep. And uh, we went out there to visit. I was still on the road, but we had a day off in Tulsa before our next uh, service in Oklahoma City. So uh, I actually knew somebody that was going to school there. I had them come pick me up. We stayed at a hotel in town there, and we toured the campus. When you would step onto that campus, 1990s, there was a presence. There was a presence on the campus. You just walk on the campus, and it was like something. It was like you, you just experienced God. And it was like, uh, we talked about casting, but how about reeling? It was like being reeled in. Like, like there was a draw, and it was supernatural, and it was God. Just when you step on, when people get to the parking lot and get out of their car, they ought to realize, where am I? Something's, something's different. Something's different. Now, we, that night, we toured the campus that day thought it was wonderful. That night, they were having a service at Rama Bible Church, the local church there. That's the church I told you normally seats 4,500 people. Yeah. Couldn't get a seat during winter Bible seminar in those, in those days. But anyhow, uh, we, so we went, and we walked, in the, we walked in the doors to the foyer, like you have a, a foyer, I don't know what you call it, vestibule, something, but you, you have that, that area out there, and we walked through those doors, and then we had, they had, uh, you know, you have those two sets of double doors in the back, yes? Yep. They had about, uh, I don't know, 25 sets of <laughs> double doors, a big place. And so we went through one of the sets of the double doors, and, uh, and, uh, and an usher. I knew he was an usher. They were all wearing uh, burgundy-colored sport coats back in 1993, 1993. We went in the fall of that year. So uh, I, I go there, and he puts his hand out, shakes my hand. He shakes my hand and says, welcome, looks me in the eye and says these words, welcome to Rama Bible Church. We're glad you're here. And I walked in. What he didn't realize is when he shook my hand and said, welcome to Rama Bible Church, the power of God shot out of him and into me. Pretty sure he didn't realize it. What was that? That was, he's just partaking of the flow yeah. of the presence that was on that place and in that, in that service. And he was serving in his place. And for every place of service in the local church, there's an anointing on that place. He, I, I'm pretty sure he was, I mean, he might have been, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't saying, bless God, when I touch them, there's going to be a transmission. Maybe he did, but pretty sure he did. But that, that's how powerful the presence can be on a place. I don't remember what Pastor Hagen spoke that night, but I'll never forget that guy. Never saw him again. Don't, don't know who he is. Powerful. Powerful. Not, not the pastor, the usher. When that happened, I, I said, I'm coming here. I'm coming here. I'm going to come here to Bible school. 
What if, what if a visitor comes, hello, what if a visitor comes to World Harvest Church here? Huh? And they're not, when a visitor comes, they're not sure they, do they like this place or not. We're just checking it out. Huh? And somebody full of God, somebody full of God looks at him, says, welcome to church. We're glad you're here. Come on. You don't have to hug and get all rubby rubby. <laughs> huh? But you just, you're, God greets them. You, were, you, gre- you greeted them, but God greeted them. You held the door open and Jesus stepped out of you and said, hey, glad you're here. Come on in. Yes. That's what church should be. That's normal. Now, you know, you might think, well, that's just pie in the sky thinking. No, that, I, we've been in that. And, and that exists here to a degree, but I'm just talking about some of the further degrees. Right? More. Every person, I'm going to say something I said the other day, restated. Every person up on the stage ministering, every instrumentalist, you ought to be full enough of God that if people look at you, they see Jesus. They see, you, you ought to have the joy of the Lord about you. I don't mean that you're over singing somebody else. I don't mean that you're doing stuff to, that draws attention to you. I just mean it ought to be evident. That's right. That the people up on stage are God-filled people. Amen. Praise God. That's right. But for that matter, doesn't that shouldn't that standard apply to everybody in the family? Shouldn't that sta- same standard apply to everybody serving in every capacity? Absolutely. Yeah. Praise God. We said it Sunday morning. I'll say it again. It's not just you in there. It's not just you in there. God's in you, but he's in you for the purpose of manifesting through you. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 3 if we could today. God sure has helped us, huh? Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, you, you, many are familiar with the prayer that Paul p- prayed for the Ephesian church in chapter 3 of Ephesians, where he says, verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the, what? Riches. riches. In this case, that word riches means overflow. In, uh, to the overflow of his glory. glory. And what's, what's God's glory? I know there, there's definitely several different definitions you could use, but it's God's manifestation. According to the overflow, the residue of his manifestation. You know, God ought to manifest in, your, in our services enough to where when you leave the room, yeah. he's still there. I had a, I, we, I pastored in western New York, and I'm not done here, by the way, but I pastored in western New York for 11 years. Really, the last year, my wife more led it than I did. But, uh, so for, for 10 good years, and for 10 of those 11 years, we were in the same building. We occupied that building full time. From the very first service, we occupied this building, rented it, and uh, God supplied uh, for us to be able to do that every month. Amen. And, uh, and it, it sat, you could squeeze about 300 in there. We didn't have that many attending, but we, you could squeeze that many. I mean squeeze. <laughs> but anyhow, um, then the, the time came where some different things were happening. They were going to sell the whole plaza that we were in, different things. And uh, the Lord dealt with us to get out of that building. And we did, and we got into uh, another rental space that worked well for us until he uh, repositioned us and, and we left the area. So anyhow, um, in, in that, I still had the keys because they weren't going to re-rent that building. They were actually selling the plaza to tear it down and build some new stuff on that land. So I, I kind of retained that old building. I wasn't paying rent on it anymore, but I kind of retained it as a storage space for some stuff, yeah. for just some of the 
church furniture. I mean, they could have taken it out every time, any time. You know, our carpet was still there. Our platform was still there. A lot was still there. We weren't going to take that with us. We, we put so much of our own money into making it look beautiful. And I remember going back there after we'd been gone about, I don't know, four or five months. Uh, I, think, I, th- I know what it was. It was uh, I was giving away some stuff that we weren't going to use anymore. I was giving it to another church. And so I went back there, God, and I hadn't been in that building in a long time. Yeah, right. And I walked in there, and I sensed God. Wow. Wow. Why? Because for years, all that building had been used for was to facil- facilitate the flow of God. Amen. And it was still there. Just still there. You walk in, it was like, boom. Like, glory, glory, glory. How come I said that? I don't know. Praise the Lord. Oh, talked about the, yes, I, I do know. Why you, why don't you help me? The overflow of his manifestation, the residue. There, there, there should be a residue in between services. That's what we're talking about. When believers come in, the, the atmosphere should be saturated with God. Yeah. God doesn't like to be kept in a box. You know how we sometimes say, don't put God in a box? I mean, he did at one time. It was the Ark of the Covenant. But then, but then after he got out of that, now you're his box. Now I said, now you're his box. God, God's in the box of your inner man. But he don't want to stay there. He's in you to come out of you. He's in you to manifest. So according to the overflow of his manifestation, he'll strengthen you with might that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in agape may be able to comprehend with all saints how, what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and height. Come on, how, many, how many older people remember how deep is your love? How deep is your love? And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you, 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 John boy, you, Ruthie, you, Harriet, that you might be filled. This is, beyond, this is, this is almost too much. That's why he prayed that they could comprehend this. That you might be Filled, say it with me, filled with all the fullness of God. You got me the amplified, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind that. Cause, and it, it, is a, it is something. It is something. When you get it, that you may really come to know practically Practically through experience for yourself. That's what I'm talking about. Having, having real experience with God. Tangible experience. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. You know, we have, a, a, well, married couples. Some of you, you, know, you guys are a married couple. Can you, how long have you been married now? 12 years. Okay. You doing okay tonight? I, I asked how long you've been married, and she's like, oh. <laughs> twelve? No, you didn't. You're right. I, you're right. Twelve years. In twelve years, do you have a lot of practical experience with each other? If I asked you, if I asked you about different experiences you've had in twelve years, can you start uh, from, the, from the time you got? I'm not asking you to do this, by, by the way, but you could start from the time you got married and say, "Well, we took this trip." And then we did this, and then we preached in these, these tent crusades, and then we did this, and then we maybe had a vacation, then, then we had a kid, and then another kid, and then another kid. <laughs> just three, right? Yeah, just had, a, had these three kids. Oh, what is that? That's tangible experience together, right? And a married couple has a lot of, I mean, how, how, if you were to write them down, you could fill a book how big with all the experiences just in 12 years. Yeah. Right. How many experiences have you had in 12 years? Well, how many here you've been married more than 40 years? Anybody here? More, how many years? 44. 44. Well, congratulations. Your book's going to be bigger than theirs. Yeah. They, they got 12. You got almost four times that. Yeah. 
to where if you went back and wrote down, you got this experience, this experience. Well, we went through this together. We went through this. Not all of them were pleasant, but maybe a lot of them were pleasant. And you have all kinds of experiences you can put your finger on. That's with two people. What should it be with you and God? See, we, th- we think that it's more tangible. We think that it's more of, of a real experience what we do with each other, husband and wife. It shouldn't be as real as, what, as the experience you have with God. God is offering everybody in this room, everybody in his body, regular, tangible experience. Practically. Practically. Through experience. Through the pastor's experience? Huh? What does it say? For our experience for yourself. The love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. That you, remember who I talked to? You, John Boy. You, Ruthie. Ru- you, Harriet. Is that who I used? Okay. That you may be filled through all your being. In other words, this feeling is so strong that it's not just something you sense spiritually, but it's affecting, it's affecting your mind. It's, it's giving you this sense of peace and well-being, and your head will say, shouldn't you be worrying about this? This deserves worry. This deserves worry. This is a worry-worthy cause. <laughs> and when you're, when, when you're so full with God throughout your being, your head's like, too dumb to worry, Sorry. That you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God. Look at this. That you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body, a body meaning spirit, soul, and body. Your whole being, your whole body, which is three parts. A body, holy just means completely. Completely filled and flooded. Flooded, what happens in a flood? Something goes where it shouldn't normally go. If you come home and furniture is floating... And suddenly you have a water bed when this like well, they hadn't made those in a long time. I thought this was Tempur-Pedic, but it's a water bed. <laughs> Something is where it doesn't normally go. How many know how many know that God doesn't normally overwhelm your physical senses? But when you're wholly filled and flooded, when you're flooded, it's there is overflow of his presence. There's over so we experienced a little of this last night. We'll experience some more of this in a moment. But uh, there, there's regular measures of his presence. We talked about it, praise and worship. Come on, entering in, you're experiencing God. There's greater measures of his presence. What was that? That's, that's the building just being so saturated that people come in. And, and like uh, Brother Hagen talks about services where people come into the church, sit in the back row, and just sit there and start shaking, shaking like this, under the presence of God, and just get up and shake all the way to the altar, fall over, get saved. Amen. Nobody, nobody, nobody brought them by the hand, nobody took them. The power of God brought them down there. There's that measure, and then there, there are overflow measures of God's presence where he floods you. Where there's, uh, there's uh, you can experience his presence in degrees. But some of those degrees can get so strong that they begin to challenge your mortality. They confront your mortality and you feel like, if I have any more of this, I might just fly, fly away. Like, that's, that's what happened with Enoch in the book of Genesis. Bible says Enoch was not, for he walked with God. He's experiencing God's presence and getting so, drawing so close and experiencing so much of God 
and enjoying his tangibility that the Lord's like, you're a whole lot closer to my house than your house. You want to just come? <laughs> God, can, God can flood your life. He wants you to experience rich measures of his presence. What's that mean, rich, rich measures? Well, have, uh, anybody, I don't want to get you too hungry, but if, if you ever had uh, something that was so rich? Mm, yeah. well, give me an example. Come on, talk to me. Talk, chocolate, cake. chocolate cake. What's rich chocolate cake? What's, what is it about it that makes it rich? <laughs> Listen, Balaam. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a, it's like there's an increased density. Density. More mass. And if I could just put it in these terms, the chocolate bites you back. Right? right. You taste the chocolate and the, you kiss the chocolate and the chocolate kiss you. Mm. (laughs) The chocolate, come on, yeah? Yeah, the, how about I know? When when chocolate cake's that rich, it talks back to you. It, it It starts talking to you. And what do you do? You respond. You say, uh, huh? You eat it, and when it's that rich, what do you say? Mm. You, <laughs> I didn't know that's what you were supposed to do. I, like, I actually try to talk while I'm eating. I'll eat it, and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is so rich. Yeah. What happens? The flavor becomes tangible, strong. God wants you to experience the richest measure of his divine presence. Well, well, how do we get that? How do I get there? You start by responding and recognizing and responding. If you want to have the richest measure, start responding to the slightest measure. Anytime you sense any of God, you're like, let's go, let's go. Listen, listen, when you, go to, when you lay down tonight, young people, listen to me. If you're, if you're young, younger than 30, whatever, this works for everybody else, but older people, you know, the Bible says, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Why? Because you, you go to sleep too quick. <laughs> I'm older, I get more tired, I got to go to sleep. But yeah, young people, listen, listen to me. I'm speaking by the word of the Lord here tonight. You lay down in bed tonight. Turn your heart. Don't t- put your phone down. Put your phone down. Can you do it? Can you do that part? Turn your heart toward God. Watch him manifest in your life tonight. Watch him man- when you lay down. He'll come and visit you. I don't mean it'll be some major thing. I just mean... You'll, you'll, you'll experience his presence. And when you do, start to respond. You remember last night, we didn't really finish it up, but remember last night we talked about how the prophet Samuel, now Samuel became a prophet, but here he was just a kid serving, along, serving the priest Eli. Yeah, and do you remember, you look at me like you don't even remember this last night, but do you remember 1 Samuel chapter three when the Lord called to Samuel and what did Samuel do? He, he, he said, here I am, but he ran to Eli. Cause, why? Because he was used to being called by Eli. Eli was in a realm with which he was most familiar, the natural realm. So he recognized the voice, but he didn't properly respond. Therefore, he never got the instructions. And, and this happened two or three times. We didn't finish talking about it. So uh, another time, the voice says, Samuel. And he said, here I am, goes, wakes up Eli. He's like, Eli's like, would you stop waking me up? I'm an older man, I see my sleep. (laughs) But Eli said, next time you hear that voice, say, speak, Lord, your servant hears, and God will visit you. And he did. did. See, it doesn't just matter that we respond. We must learn the appropriate responses at the right time. Samuel responded, but didn't respond the right way. 
So God, respond to God. When you sense God, respond. How do you respond to God? Well, one of the, one of the level one responses, one of the first ways you respond is through what I talked about last night, that tool of praise and worship and thanksgiving. Just start saying, Father, I just thank you. I praise you. But then just sit there and sense him. Sense him. He'll, he'll, he'll just he'll come upon you. Not in any weird way. He'll come upon you, and you'll just sense his presence. Let him deal with you. And then just love on him. All of us can do this, you understand. Yeah. He'll do, he'll do it right now. He'll do it right now. And you'll, you'll begin to experience a measure of his presence. And the more you respond to his presence, the more you'll experience of his presence. And if you, how many want to get to the richest measure? Then you have to continue to respond. You have to continue to respond. You have to continue to respond. Now, I hadn't planned on going here. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have somebody help me. Find, while I'm talking, find the scripture where um, Elisha was on his deathbed and the, and the king went and the arrows, shot the arrows, okay. shoot them on the ground, remember? Yep. And let me know where it is, please. Better yet. <laughs> Better yet. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Well, if you just read it yesterday or something, you might know or, or you might just know. Google. <laughs> Second Kings 13. Se- yeah. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Are we being helped tonight? Yes. I'm telling you what, God has, I mean, um, I mean, I have good meetings wherever I go, but I'm telling you, these have been a joy, and I just feel like God has shown up. We're not done yet. But God has shown up here. I can tell you one reason why. I told my wife about these meetings a month ago. And things, but I'll share it with the pastor, and he can share it with you if he wants to. But anyhow, verse 14 says, Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said to him, take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. You following me? Yes, Anybody like watch Hawkeye? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, 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 who here has watched Hawkeye? You know Hawkeye? Can I ask you a question? Maybe you know. How come he never runs out of arrows? <laughs> I, I, it's like no matter how many times he reaches back there, he's always got one. Uh, but anyhow, I thought that was interesting. <laughs> Take bow and arrows. And he said, now he said to the king of of Israel, put your hand on the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. Do you see that? Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Elisha's the prophet. Uh, To get people started responding to God, sometimes you have to put your hands on their hands. and, and, And sometimes we literally do that through the, Laying on of the hands. God can be, God's presence can be transmitted through touch. But Elisha's putting his hands on the king's hands. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot, and he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek until you have consumed them. And so this, this uh, this, this whole intercourse here was, it was symbolic of, of some things um, that was going to happen. But then he said, he said this, verse 18, he said, he said, take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, now smite upon the ground. 
So the first time, he put his hands on his hands, guiding him. Okay, now shoot. Uh-huh. Right? right. Now, now, the next instruction that comes, he said, okay, you, you do it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do it. You do it. Shoot their arrows. Shoot those arrows. And he smote thrice. In other words, he shot three arrows and stayed or stopped. So you can imagine, you know, first of all, I won't ask because I know, I know what part of the country I'm in. I won't ask how many own firearms and stuff like that. And <laughs> ain't going to let anybody t- touch me. You ain't going to come, you ain't gonna come, come try to take them away. No, I, I, know, you, I, know, I, know, I know where I'm at. But if I, if I said, if I said uh, you know, if we're standing back in pastor's office and I said, take your firearm and shoot, <laughs> shoot empty it out, empty, it, yeah. empty the cartridge on the, on the ground, you're like, oh, you'd be like, okay, that's, that's really not <laughs> normally how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, there's the potential of things going where they shouldn't go and things like that. So you can imagine that the king's like, the crazy prophet's hallucinating and so he kind of, you, you got to imagine in a half-hearted measure. Now, they were shooting out the window, so that is a little different story right there. But you, So you can imagine in a half-hearted way, he's like, he took three of his arrows. He's like, these things are expensive. They're going to break. They're going to break. You can't reuse it when you smite an arrow, shoot an arrow on the ground. It's probably going to break. So he's like, van, van, ah. Looking over. Good? Are we good? Are we good? And, and look, at the, look at the next verse. It said, and the man of God was what? Wrath. What is wrath? It's the, it's the action form of wrath. Amen. Right? right. If, you're, if you're wrath, that means you have wrath. What is wrath? It's not minor agitation. You are boiling with anger. What was, what was the prophet so angry about? He said, you should have smitten five or six times. Then had you smitten Syria till you had consumed it, whereas now you'll smite th- Syria, but thrice. In other words, your enemy's not going to go away. Come on. You give a half-hearted response, get ready for a half victories. Partial victories. You want the richest measure of the divine presence? Then little, then little Mickey Mouse responses won't do. Oh, praise the Lord. (laughs) When God moves, you need to respond. And you need to respond all the way. Empty your quiver. Empty. you, You know what a quiver is? That's the thing that they put the arrows in. Empty it. Empty it. What's it. What do you mean by that? Full response. And so I've just, noticed that I've just noticed this over the years, that the people that get the greatest benefit, the people that have the greatest miracles, the people that have the greatest deliverance, are the ones who fully respond. Not the ones who give a half-hearted, because listen, I've been in services, and they're like, you know, can we dismiss so we can get to dinner? Don't get me wrong, I appreciate all that, you know, like here, they've, they've just really blessed us by having a meal for us after the service. Um, it, to me, it's, it's so much more convenient, usually healthier, than having to go out and stay out late and when the food's the greasiest, you know. I appreciate that. But, but if God's moving, let it get cold throw it out, say, sorry, we had dinner, but now we can't because it's no good anymore. We missed our window. So, fine, fine. I'll eat another day. Amen. 
But when God moves, respond all the way. Partial response brings partial blessing. Why? Because all of God's blessings flow through, through those measures of his presence. That's his anointing Amen. in your life. Amen. I want to I be, be rich like Pastor Chris. Respond like Pastor Chris. Amen. Some of you still ain't going to smile. That's fine. <laughs> well, I don't like what you're preaching. Point number six. <laughs> or was that one of them? I don't care if you like it. That was one of them. Okay, we'll use that one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember what I told you about tonight you get in bed? God, God's going to visit some people tonight. He's going to visit some people tonight. But, but before, before you get home and get to bed, he's going to visit some people here. Amen. Let me ask you this. And, and, and listen, remember I talked a little bit about humility earlier in the service Amen. and how, you know, pride, want, pride wants you to believe that uh, pr- pr- pride, uh, pride will make everybody try to believe that you already know everything. You know, that I got this, I got this. Humility knows I wouldn't know anything if it wasn't for God. (laughs) So who would have the humility to say, I get what you're talking about in a sense, but I really have never been able, like last night when people were, uh, because I'll get back to that thought, yes? I told you kind of a level one response is to God's movement. It's, you know, praise, worship, thanksgiving. Well, what, what would be the next level response? Well, sometimes other physical movement. The dancing, you saw it last night. The running, you saw it last night. Shouting, you know, just maybe more dramatic responses to that. And you might say, well, I... I get what you're saying, but I I need help. I need help getting started in that. I need help entering in. I want to, but I would need some help. Is there anybody here that you feel like that's the case? That and I'm saying that because I remember the time that when that was the way with me. It's like I want I want to experience what other people are experiencing, but I'm not. I'm just not there. Well, first of all. Are you born again? You have to be born again. And if you're not, we can help you with that too. But if you're here and you're born again, you say, I, and you say, this is probably not everybody in the room, but you say, I, I kind of could use some help. Put your, by putting your hand up, let me know uh, that, you would, that you would want that help. Is there anybody like that? Yeah, young lady, I see you over there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now, by putting up your hand, you're not, say, you're not saying, and I'm not saying, there's something wrong with you. How many of you, the devil has come to you and said, there must be something wrong with you? You were honest before, now you're not honest now. Anybody, anybody at all, the enemy's ever said, there must be something wrong with you? Can I tell you, can I, can I help you with that thought? You need to answer that thought. You need to answer it this way. Who's saying that to you? You, All you need to do is say, I don't know, but there's definitely something wrong with you. There is something wrong with all of us. It's called flesh. We're all crucifying it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, I'm going to help you, those of you who raised your hand. I'm going I'm to help you if, you'll, if you're okay. You got some time? Just it's not going to take a ton. But I'm going to help you experience a richer measure of the divine presence. Before I help you, I'm going to help somebody maybe who didn't raise their hand. But uh, actually, they're going to they're help me. Can you help me? Come on up here. You help me? Come stand over here. 
Stand, face me. Face me. Face me. Hallelujah. We're just going to together respond to God. We're going to initiate a little thing, respond to God. And I'm going to take your hand. Remember how Elisha took, put his hands on the hands of the king? I'm just going to take your hand. And you can just praise or rejoice. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, What's happening? Ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ho. Ha, ha, ha. Ha. Mm. God's presence is multiplying in density. It's becoming richer. But he's responding to it. He's responding to it. Ha, 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 ha. You can laugh, or you can, if it overcomes you, you can just marinate in it like what he's doing. You, you sensing that? Yeah, I know you are. Ha, ha, ha. Do, do, do me a solid. Do me a favor. Keep doing that. Uh, even when I take my hands uh, off you, can you keep doing that? Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, those of you young lady who raised your hand, come on up here. Come on up here. We're just going to. Uh, all of you that raised your hand, you, you want. Uh, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Ha. Yeah. Yeah. God loves you, doesn't he? What's your name, doll? Evie? Oh, I haven't, I know, I know a gal named Evie. Well, is that short for something? Um, uh, Evelyn. Evelyn. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to put my hands on you, and you know what your job is? We're just going to start responding to God's presence. You're saved, right? Yeah, you're born again. So God lives where? Inside. He lives inside of you, and he wants to come out of you. He wants to fill you, yes? You look scared. You're scared. You're not scared, are you? You're not sad, are you? You know I don't care? No, I'm just <laughs> give, give me your hands, Evie. Oh, woo, woo, ha, ha, whoa, oh, oh, hey, hey, ha, 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 ho, ho, just keep, now you keep responding. I'm going to pair you up. Come on up here. Help her. Help her. You don't, don't speak in tongues. Not time for that now. Just praise, worship, rejoice, laugh. There you go. Don't need it. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, oh, well, my, 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 Stand by, I'll tell you when. Ha, 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 ha. God loves you as much as these others, doesn't he? Give me your hands. Put them out. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, ha, 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 ha. It's not that bad, sis. God loves you real good. He withhold no good thing from them that walk uprightly. You walk uprightly, don't you? Yeah, you didn't rob that bank we heard about the other day. All right, I didn't think so. We're not begging for anything today, are we? We're not begging for nothing. No, it's already on you, isn't it? Yeah. Put your, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just rejoice, just rejoice. Hello, hello, hello. Just rejoice, just rejoice. Just rejoice, just rejoice. Just praise, ha, ha, ha. Don't worry about falling. We'll put you in a seat. Go, march, keep marching back. We'll get you right in a seat. Hold her up, hold her up, hold her up, hold her up, up, up. Thank you. There you go. Now you just keep rejoicing. You already helped me. You help her rejoice, yes? Ha, ha, ha. Give me your hands. Give me your hands. Woo! Whoa! Whoa! Ha, 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 ha. You three, you're going to come up and let me uh, bless you? Come on. Ha, 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 ha. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Ha, ha. Anybody else you want to come up? Whoa. Woo. 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 God's going to visit you. Put your hands out. Put your hands out. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Look at me. Are you girls, are you all, uh, you're born again? Not sure? Yes or no? You are. You are? You saved? Both. Have you received Jesus? You have. 
You all have? That's so cool. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? We're going to help you. Do you want that? Do you want that? You sure? You super sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to put my hands back on your hands. And God's going to come upon you. And if you'll yield to him. Now let me explain what I mean by that. When I put my hands on you, his power will come upon you. You could keep your mouth shut and not say anything. Or you can, by faith, open your mouth and start saying the words that come out. Those are going to be in what we call other tongues. It's not, it's not scary. But it's supernatural. So, like, I can, I, I can enter that flow right now. That's not my head doing it. That's from down here. So you can do that. Do you believe you can do that? Easy. Do you, know how, do, do, you do that? And you're going to do it with us. Do you do that? You're not sure you want to. You, you're sure you want to. God will fill all of you right now. If you'll be bold. You want to be bold to yield? You're bold to come up. Let's all be bold to yield together. Pray this with me. Close your eyes. Say, Father. Now, you've got to be bolder than that. You've got to do better than that. We're just going to start off good, okay? Say it strong, like strong legs. Father God, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you saved me and delivered me from sin. I have received Jesus as my Lord. And now, Father, I thank you for the fullness of your spirit. I receive the spirit of God coming upon me to empower me. Fill me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now give me your hands. We're going to start speaking in tongues now. Open your mouth real boldly. Everybody, let's do that. Come on, you do it. He won't force you. You got to be bold, but speak by faith. Miss Faith, come on over. She's going to stay with you and help you, yes? You help them and instruct them if they need instruction, okay? Hello. Why so sad? Why so serious? Hello. Put your hands out if you would like this. Hey, woo, glory, ha, 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 ha. Put your hands out, okay? Be blessed, young lady. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Oh, oh, woo, all you have to do is receive. All you have to do is yield. Listen, what I said to those gals about speaking in tongues, it's the same here. We're not trying to get something from God. He's already poured it out. All we're doing is yielding. How do we yield? What do, what do we do? We respond to God. What's the, what's the level one response? What do we say? Praise, worship, and thanksgiving. Can you praise him? Sir, can you praise him? Easy, easy, easy. It's so easy. Just say, thank you, Jesus. I receive. I receive. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you fill me. Woo, glory, glory, glory. Receive and rejoice. Receive. Are you with him? Yeah? Oh, my, 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 my. Ha, 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 ha. That's God's presence. That's God's presence. Woo. 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 Ha, 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 ha. Help, help the young lady. Help the young lady back up if you would. Ha, 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 Keep rejoicing, okay? Keep rejoicing and help him. Put your arms on him. Help him. Glory to God. And you praise and worship God. Be blessed. Whoa, oh, yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Can I say something to everybody? God's not going to make anybody do anything. He's not going to make you speak in tongues. He's not going to make you rejoice. He's certainly not going to push you over and make you fall. None of that. But our job is to simply yield to what he's already given. See what I'm saying? So while you're down here in line, start rejoicing. Start praising. What What are you doing? You're opening the channel through which his power flows. Then when I touch you, it's an easy flow. Hey. 
And remember what I told you about smiling. This is not a funeral. Hallelujah. So be blessed in Jesus' name. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Repeat after me. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha. Whoa, ho, ho. Hey, ha, ha, ho. Woo. Hey, hey. Oh, mm. Getting better, huh, are we? Ha, 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 ha,
It doesn't matter. I'm going to get you anyhow. Ha, ha, ha. Ho! Ha, ha, ha. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. 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 Ha, ha. Ho, ho. He, he. Ha, ha. Hey, hey. Ha, ha. Oh, why weren't you in line? Or were you? Maybe you were. All right. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Yes. Yes. Oh. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Rejoice, 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 re rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Sorry, I guess you weren't ready for that. My bad. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Can I touch him? Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Whoa, 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 whoa. Woo! Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Easier for me, easier for you to come up here than me to go back there. Just so anybody else that you want to come. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. The richest measure. Rich, filled with all the fullness. Filled with all the fullness. Filled with all the fullness. Cap, do something with these people. Ha, 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 ha. Ha 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 ha! Ho ho ho! Oh 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 oh! Hey! Ha 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 ha! Ha! Ha 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 ha! Ha! We'll get to you momentarily here. Yeah, Doc, rejoice, rejoice! Get good at it! Get good at it! Get good at it! Get good at it! Ha ha ha! Ho ho ho! Ha 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 ha! Get good at it! Get good at it. Hallelujah. Don't look at me at that tone of voice. Ha, 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 ha. Ho, 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 ho. Yes, this is our answer. Help me. Come here. Come here. Help me. Where'd they go? Oh, there they, there they are over here. Come on. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. There. Oh. Ha, 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 ha. Ha 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 does he love you? Is he withholding from you or is he blessing you big time? Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Say, I receive. 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 Receiver. 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 Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ho, 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 ho. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, ha, ha, ha. He, 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 he. Ha, uh, uh. Mm. Hey, hey, hey. You still here? Doing good, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. We may drop you, but we'll drop you easy. Ha, 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 sir. Ha, ha, rejoice, 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 rejoice. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, 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 yes. Happy for you. Happy for you. Happy for you. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Yay! Yay! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Oh, praise Him! Praise Him! Praise Him! Lift your hands, everybody, and thank Him. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for freedom and deliverance and blessing and healing.
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now listen, when we minister to you, friends, when we minister to you that way, uh, minister the joy of the Lord or minister the blessing to you in that way, anything else you need, just believe that you receive it. If you needed healing, I don't have to lay hands on you again. Amen. How many are we going to get? How many we see the value of this, first of all? It's not coming and acting crazy. What are we doing? We're cooperating with the manifestation of God. We're being a vessel He can flow through and fill us through our whole being to the richest measure of the divine presence. Amen. And what's it mean when we all get involved in these areas? It means that people that come in that don't understand can sense God. Amen. 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 Y'all can go back to your seat. So happy for you. Believing with you. Glory to God. Pastor Chris, I think that we're, uh, oh, you, you want. I want mine. <laughs> Put your hands out. Mm. Mm. Whoa, glory, 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 glory. Now, remember what I said tonight. Get in bed, put those phones down. Sense, turn the lights out. Just sense God. Let him minister to you. Let him visit you. He's going to talk to some of you about, about things he has for you in the future, different things like that. But then when you come together as God would move at different times in the service, and you'll, you'll know because the pastor will be start going that direction or whatever. Shoot all your arrows. No, none of this half-hearted response. Amen. What a joy to be with you guys. It was a, it was a real honor that I would get invited back here to, to uh, Paducah. And we're going to look forward to seeing many of you, hopefully all of you, in uh, August, May. May. In May. Praise God. So thank you so much. We'll turn it over to somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise Him. Well, be seated if you can. Hallelujah. We have been helped. God used a man to lead and help us, but God furthered us. God has brought us further along. Praise God. You know, there are many other ways that God moves. Praise God, there are many other ways that God moves. But the man of God talked about humility tonight. And a lot of these responses, you could call them lower level responses. But part of the, listen to me, part of the big purpose is Getting you out of your own way, out of your head, laying down your pride about what you think you might look like or what others think you might look like or their opinion of you. You got you to let all that go and yield to God. And as we get really good at that, there'll be, there's other, there's more to reach for. We're so thankful for what the waters we've attained to. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Well, a couple of things. We want to let you give. And the Lord has been talking to us in these series of services and gatherings about His grace. And that His grace enriches us in everything. We are enriched because of His grace not going to take you there, but there's a grace that flows to our finances. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, resulting in what? That you having all sufficiency in all things are furnished in abundance. You have no need for outside aid or support financially. Material. Why? Because there's a grace. Amen? But verses before that talk about a hilarious giver. 
I believe God would be pleased with a hilarious offering tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, you, you just, ha, you are thrilled to give. Amen. There's a grace to move on you to release seed, a grace on you to receive harvest. Come on. A grace that'll open up doors and bring you up to another, to another level in every realm. I mean, in every realm. And I'm going to say it again. You and I, it's not buying anything, but you and I, we get, according to Philippians 1, 5, 6, and 7, to partake of the grace we sow into. Financially and materially. You think about the, he's been talking about the grace that's on your life. Amen. But we can actually partake. Paul said, you're a partaker of my grace. I value that. And he said, it's because of your ongoing partnership with me that you have become a partaker of my grace. Amen. And you could see why God would lead me, your pastor, to, to have different ministry gifts in. Because there's a grace on Reverend Joel that's not on me. But we're blessed and furthered as a body, as people. Amen. Y'all want to take a vote if we're having him back as the Lord would lead us pretty quick here? You want to vote about it? Is it unanimous? All right. Not that you get a vote anyway. <laughs> Praise God. Make your checks out to WHC, everyone. Praise God. Uh, get your offering ready to release. If you're uh, using the text to give, listen, if you've been blessed out there online, I know some of you, I've seen you, you're on every night listening, participating in different states. Come on, you can sow back into what you've received. Uh, the text to give number is right there. Text the keyword guest, G-U-E-S-T, and your dollar amount. And 100% of that will get turned over to him. Cash offering envelope, of course. While you are finishing your offering prayer, I want to take the opportunity as a pastor here to say thank you to our helps ministry here at World Harvest Church of Paducah. Amen. All of the wonderful servants, you see them, you've not seen them. But there's a lot of work that's gone in, a lot of serving. And I want to commend this congregation. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, work all day, handle what you got to handle. Amen. Some of you had kid things, but then you came back. You've been, and the body could get tired, but you just pushed past all that. And uh, we've been so blessed because of that. So I wanted to commend you as your pastor. Such an honor to be called your pastor. Amen. Well, Father, I just release my faith over this offering. I thank you that we're graced to give. We're graced to stand in faith for a harvest. We're graced to reap a harvest. And God, we believe that you are causing all grace and every earthly favor to abound toward us so that we receive all that that verse promises. We have a full sufficiency. We're rich in every area. We're enjoying a full supply financially and materially. And God, we want that to be a witness to all those who are experiencing tough times out there financially. Just make a good example out of us. We'll be careful to give you all the credit and all the glory for all that you are doing and have done in our life. I call the people blessed and we're so thankful, Father, for all of the deposits that you've put in the man of God, all that you, all the development and skill, the faithfulness and this, we honor him and his part in cooperating with the plan of God. We, it's, a, it's an honor for us to show honor to him through these offerings. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, quickly, we'll dismiss you right after. Let's go ahead and receive this offering tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you know, I believe God has something wonderful for us tomorrow night. Amen. If you're called to this church uh, to be here. I, I checked my heart said, Father, you want me to cancel, let the people rest? And I didn't, I didn't have that unction. So God has something wonderful for us tomorrow night. And we're going to be here to get it. We are uh, going to not have mentoring on Thursday night. And we will rest during that time. Well, you can stand on your feet, praise God. Again, a big, big thank you to you for honoring God, loving God, being hungry, pressing past your flesh all that you've done, all your service and love. We thank you so much. It's your last opportunity in this series of meetings to get that good material off the book table. We don't want him to carry it home, amen? 
And so get that. God bless you. We love you. And uh, uh, if you're called here, we'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.